What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my RC channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Eoshin E52. You know, if the Eoshin E50 and the E55 had a baby, the Eoshin E52 is what it would look like. This compact mini quad with foldable arms sports a camera, a Wi-Fi FPV, and altitude hold comes in bind and fly where you would be connecting to your smartphone or the RTF which comes with its very own transmitter got some instructions here looks like some accessories including a prop remover charger USB charger and some extra props Here is the transmitter, powered by 4 AA batteries, the E52 definitely has a unique transmitter with a lot of buttons, all of which actually serve a purpose, there's no fake buttons here. Button configuration is not as intuitive as I would have liked, so you'll have to study the instructions manual a bit before flying. The buttons on the right half are the trims, with the exception of the right trigger and down button, which is used to initiate flips and land the quad, respectively. Buttons on the left side are for headless mode, one key return, photo and video, and the left trigger is used to switch between flight modes. Holding the same button will shut the motors down in the case of an emergency. Think of it as a failsafe. Lastly, the up button is just as it sounds. It's used to launch the quad with the touch of a button. This adapter is used to hold your smartphone in place. It's very strong and should be able to hold even the biggest of phones. And it firmly locks in place to the back of your transmitter. And without further ado, the E52. Alright, so first impressions. It's very lightweight. You can definitely tell that it's a toy, but nothing against it. It's still very well put together. The arms feel nice and sturdy. Moving it back and forth, there's absolutely no play. Extending it all the way, you can just barely feel that it locks in place. Regardless, they should be perfect for the type of flying it's going to be doing. The special battery that's included, it's not so special after all. It's simply a one cell LiPo with a JST connector placed inside the plastic casing. You can see they try to make it look and feel a little bit more expensive by using this smooth coating on the top half of the shell. I believe it's called soft touch plastic. What's crazy is I just spent the past 20 minutes trying to figure out what this was called. Sitting in the front is your typical pinhole style camera. Sitting on a swivel mount, you can easily adjust the tilt. Video clips are recorded through a smartphone application. Search the app for Wi-Fi UFO. I'll have a link in the description below. It's available for both Android and iPhone. The clips record at a maximum pixel resolution of just 640 by 480 while FPS runs at 15 frames per second. Far from high definition, keep in mind that it's running Wi-Fi FPV. Higher frame rates would increase latency, which would further degrade the FPV experience. I've never been a big fan of Wi-Fi FPV, mostly due to its high latency and low image quality. But I think the E52 would work fine for those who are looking for a quick taste of FPV on a budget. Alright, here we go. First, we power the E52 so that it begins transmitting a Wi-Fi signal, or a Wi-Fi signal. Did you guys know that it's pronounced Wi-Fi and not Wi-Fi? Anyways, give it a sec to initialize and connect to the hotspot with Wi-Fi UFO in its name. Close out of that and go to the Wi-Fi UFO application. It should connect to the quad automatically. Wow, this is really stable. I really don't even have to touch the throttle at all. It is pulling to the left a bit, but this is easily remedied by trimming the quad. Nonetheless, I gotta say it's really stable. It does feel a little weak. I'm flying here in flight mode 1, so maybe this is the reason. There are three flight modes. You can change it by pressing the left trigger. 
and it'll beep once, twice, or thrice depending on which mode you're entering. Let's try a different flight mode. As the flight mode increases, the angle of pitch and roll increases as well as the yaw speed, but still it feels quite underpowered. I don't think this would fare very well in windy conditions. On one hand, you want a very tame pitch and roll to be able to record videos, but on the other hand, a strong gust would probably blow it away. I think this quad is very easy to fly, which makes it ideal for beginners. What's cool about this is you have the option of using a smartphone or a hard radio as a transmitter. I found both were 100% perfectly usable. Although I actually prefer to use my smartphone since I feel I'm able to record smoother footage when I'm using the phone's gyro to control the quad. I didn't fly too far away, I probably stayed within a 30 meter range and really had no issues. Wi-Fi FPV doesn't get the best range. You'll know when it's reached its limit when the video becomes glitchy. If by then you don't turn back, there's a good chance the screen will just freeze up entirely. If you really want to try out FPV, I would suggest using a 5.8 GHz transmission. With the E52, I get an average flight time of around 6 minutes, which isn't too bad. So to sum things up, the E52 which seems to be the bastard child of the E50 and the E55 is suitable for beginners because it's super stable and easy to fly. With altitude hold, you can let go of the throttle and it'll just hover in place. It's lacking in the power department, but all in all, it's a great setup for just 30 bucks. I do have FPV footage, but I'll be uploading that in a separate video. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying. Thank you.